welcome to the first tax return problem. Um, we're doing tax return problem number three in chapter seven. And so this is our problem for businesses and it's Schedule C and Form 1040. Now, while we could have used old software, um, because I have access for my individual course to the newer software, I want, that's what I gave out, because I want you guys to use the newer software, number one, because you might as well get acquainted with it, and number two, because with the tax return problems, this is more about getting experience and putting in the time to use it. I'm giving you a video going over how to enter things, and it's just, you know what the, the final numbers are, I'm giving those to you, so it's just a matter of putting in the time to play with the software. And this way, when you get to review what's on the tax return, you'll be looking at the newer forms. Also, the change in forms is just taking the, the two-page 1040, which has now been broken out into eight pages. That's the only difference. All of the regular forms still follow. So I figure we may as well look at this tax return problem as an opportunity to look at the new forms. Um, you're getting credit for, most people uh, got full credit on these, the last course I taught, because again, I give out the check numbers. It's just, do you wanna put in the time to get the numbers right in the software? And I'm showing you more than I ever did in the last classes as well in this video right now, the problem and how to go about it. Okay, so, um, and one thing to note with tax software, especially professional software, you go through, you enter all of the information. It is your job to then look at the tax return and make sure that the information you entered and what how you know things should be taxed is on the return correctly and that the return is correct. What often happens is things will be different on the tax return and you need to check those numbers the tax software is often right when it comes to calculation differences between what you might have calculated, say, a gain would be, and what the software calculates it as. However, other times, it's just a matter of getting a certain box checked that you know should be checked and for some reason isn't checked. It's a matter of you inverse a number somewhere and you've got to correct and find where that number is and correct it. Uh, so things like this. Those are common things to deal with if you work in tax, uh, the tax profession, preparing tax returns. And certainly something to be aware of if you're doing your own taxes, right, To and using software like this. It's not, oh, I entered it. I can't control what the tax form looks like. That is not a viable, uh, you know, excuse it's it's our responsibility to make sure what's on it is correct so i'm going to flip over here to the tax return um be sure to watch the first video for tax act uh downloading installing and getting started i bring you to the screen explain everything so now we're going to get started we're going to go file up in the top right add a client return add a new client and this is going to be 1040 And now you're gonna enter all of the personal information for this taxpayer. Okay, so I entered that basic information in, and you can see we only have room for one taxpayer. So you always want to enter the first taxpayer that's listed, and then that's who will be listed first on a married filing joint return. And you can tell all this information is what I got from the problem tax return, problem three, page 7-55. Um, and it's one of the last problems in the book. So now if we scroll down, we have their address and right above address you see filing status. So this is a married couple and they say filing a joint return, right? So we're gonna choose uh, married filing joint. And from here, now we'll add the spouse information. And whichever spouse is listed here will be second. And you do want to keep that the same from year to year. It's just better to keep things the same. It's not like 
there would be a fine for it, uh, but it's just going to be better to not kind of cause any issues. They did not give us birth dates, so we should be able to skip that. Leslie's occupation is a software programmer, and that looks like all we got. So we didn't have a change of address that we know of. No one retired blind. And so we'll say create client. <coughs> Once you start clicking around, you'll get this pop up that says it's a good idea to save your data from time to time. And they're asking us if we want to turn auto save on. So I would definitely say yes. Okay, now it's saying it is turned on. However, currently, the currently open return has not been given a file name. In the following dialog that appears, specify the name for the open return. If you do not wish to use auto save, this feature can be turned off under tools and then options. So tools are at the top left along the top there between reports and online. So we'll say OK. And now we'll save this as this all looks good, but instead of individual return, we'll say um, 137 tax return problem 1, because this is our first tax return problem and save and you could tell it's the chapter seven one because of the name right so we'll save that and from here 